Yeah. And then uh, a few players in here. Yeah, uh, just start by saying how much respect I have for that football team, uh, their football team. They competed to the very end. I thought the quarterback, I thought Dunn was a competitor, gritty, tough. They came here to try to win the game. I respect that. I respect the way they played. You know, two was in the game to the very end. So that was a, that was a kind of a competitive stamina and fire that we needed to compete against. Really happy with our twos at the end of the game to keep them out of the end zone. Uh, you know, it's the two out of three games we've had a fourth quarter shutout. Um, Really happy with our two offenses. They went down and scored a touchdown. So, uh, with that, I'll see what questions you guys have. Coach, just 48 offensive plays from scrimmage. I mean, just the, the flow of this game, just with how they were moving the ball with a 10 minute drive to start. How much did they kind of maybe throw the rhythm of what you wanted to do all the time? Well, I think the 48 plays because we went right down and scored. You know, <laughs> we had three possessions and we scored on three possessions, right? So, it's um, now that they did a great job in that they used up 10 minutes on that first drive. I mean, they were literally just sitting in the huddle looking to the sideline. It was a master class by Coach Farley and how to keep these games. You know, the way you want to keep them, right? Um, move the pocket, ran the quarterback. They cut us a ton. So, you know, we have these we have these pass rushers, and all of a sudden now they got a fullback cutting them on their legs. It was really well done by them. Um, but I think offensively, you know, we scored our touchdowns on our first three drives, and we got down there, and, you know, we went four on fourth and three on the fourth drive. So there just weren't a lot of drives. So, yes, I'd love the defense to be able to get the ball back for us a little bit sooner. But I also thought the offense was unbelievably efficient. You know, you go down the next, then you come out of the half, you know, we, we answer, a, I think, a takeaway the first drive. We'll take, we answer a takeaway, we go down and score. Now we have to get in the end zone. Then the next drive we score. So, um, you know, not a lot of punt work tonight for uh, Bushini. It was a 59 yard pass from Dylan to Jalen. He kind of shakes free and, and then kind of looks back. What did you think of that, of, of just his skill set on that play and his, his, his awareness to, to look so quickly back to see if Jalen? Well, that's the same play we ran last week that, you know, the kind of the play that everyone made, you know, kind of like a, was kind of a highlight reel play that he threw on the run. So that's a play where we roll right, but then we throw a post back left. You have to have an elite athlete like Jalen to do that. And um, so they blitzed off the edge. And so it's not, that's, not the, that's not the right play for that defense. So they called the right defense. But, you know, I, I've noticed a lot, even in the first game, he's done a great job of always avoiding the first rusher when people come free. He does a good job of, you know, fi find, you know finding space and time and making the throw. But, you know, he, he, he knew that that's where to go, especially with pressure. He knows, he knows he's going to flatten it. And Jalen was right where he's supposed to be. Did you see that in him through the offseason, that he was going to have that, you know, like that ability to have that, that, that sense of where the pass rush was coming from and, and the mobility to avoid a guy in a situation like that? Yeah, I think, you know, when people have asked me what, you know, what makes him special, I say that he's not a seven-on-seven -seven quarterback. You know, he likes the game part of it. Um, even the, you know, even the short yardage play, you know, that's, um, that's, uh, that's, that's what, you know, J.J. McCarthy was doing at Michigan last year, you know, handing out the fullback dive, 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 they come out tight, you know, they pull it every once in a while, and he pulled it, you know. So um, he just, you know, he just knows when to make the right play. We're a quarter away through the season. Uh, what do you love? What do you hate? Oh, I don't know about that. I, um, I, li I like being 3-0. and There's nothing that I hate. Um, um, you know, we're just going to get better each week. You know, when we start Big Ten play, you know, I, I kind of refer to this as the preseason. In my mind, we're learning, you know, learning how to win. As I told our team, the narrative of losing close games comes from trying to, when you get a lead, not trying to put the game away. And so the questions I get asked a lot are about, like, hey, you know, why aren't you guys doing more of this in the second half? Well, that's what led to a lot of the close losses, right? So we want to score, get a lead if we can, play defense and run the football. And then I want everyone to say, why are you guys so boring in the fourth quarter? And then we win. And that's, I mean, that's sincere. So I just make sure my team hears that because they're, they're, you know, they're kind of like that. That being said, you know, we wanted to be aggressive a while because this was a good night for us to work on our passing game. And that's why we threw that post at the end. It was there. We thought we had it. Um, it sounds like their kid made a play. I, you know, I thought we came down with it, but we didn't. So it is what it is. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I'll watch the tape to see exactly where we are. You know, it felt like early on we didn't tackle as well as we normally do. And uh, but I did I did like the energy the defense came out with in the second half. That had all the makings of one of those games where like, you know, if you're not locked in the second half, they score a touchdown. All of a sudden, you know, it looks like a looks like a game you're in control of. You're not. And what, what we're trying to do is control games. Control games, control games. That's what good teams do. So I felt some of that tonight. Carter Nelson had four catches, 48 yards, gets in the end zone for the first time as a Husker. Just uh, can you speak to his growth to, to get to this point of having arrived in the summer? Yeah, I mean, Carter's, Carter's, you know, like I said, this is his third game playing with, you know, 22 people in the field, you know. So, I mean, he's, he's growing and, um, um, you know, he had a couple little packages for him. You know, two of them got called early, which was great. You know, one was a, 
the red zone call, which is like an option route, and he, he won on the option and scored, um, you know, through the middle screen to him. So, um, you know, I think the sky's the limit for the things that he can do. Uh, you know, they're doing a good job of bringing him along, you know, slowly in my mind. And when I say slowly in terms of, like, giving him tasks to master because he wasn't here in the spring. But tonight was a tough night to get the ball spread out to everybody, going back to the whole 48 plays. You know, you have all these guys you want to get the rock to, but it's a good thing when, you know, you throw a ball to Jalen, he, you know, he changes, flips the field. And, you know, they had a penalty that gave us some yards as well, so. What, did, what was your, uh, what, what, how did you feel about getting the package for Heinrich and um, down there? Near the goal line, and um, you know, what you think of the way that it yeah. executed? Yeah, we put we put it in. We put it in. Um, he, he was in on the on the, the screen to Nelt to Carter. He was in on a tailback on that too. So, um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of things that we want Heinrich to Heinrich to be able to do. And he does every time he goes in. We don't want him just always just to be like, you know, a wildcat quarterback, right? Uh, I thought what I was really pleased with Heinrich was when he got in at quarterback. The way he managed that third down, find the check down was awesome. And uh, you know he. He, uh, they were bringing a lot of zero blitz. He checked, they checked, he reloaded it on the long touchdown run. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we'd like, we'd like to get a little bit more out of the quarterback run part of it. But I'll be honest with you, Mitch, one thing I've learned, every time we put a quarterback run on tape, another team has to practice it. And so they don't have to necessarily work. I just have to chew up 20 minutes of their time each day worrying about option, worrying about those things. Because we can run all the options with Heinrich. We can get under center still and run belly G option, right? We can do all that. And so I need them practicing that because that's one less time that they're practicing the other stuff that we're doing. What uh, what did Emmett show you this week in practice that got him an earlier chance, and then did he take another step in the game with his big plays? Yeah, uh, well, you know, uh, we wanted Emmett to be the third down back this week. Uh, we were, we, were, we felt like he would do a good job in the protections and getting out and catching the football. We're trying to diversify some of the roles. We didn't have a ton of third downs. You know, we were kind of not, not necessarily needing the third downs. And then that run at the end was great. You know, one, one thing about Emmett that's happened, you know, last year and this year is he's kind of like been a closer in some games, right? Whether it was Northwestern last year or Purdue, or I can't remember if the game started to run together for me. But even, you know, Maryland, oh, Maryland, Wisconsin, he had long runs that put us in position to at least try to win those games. And so he's he's a guy that comes in the fourth quarter, a change of pace, makes people miss. And that was a big time run for us. Michael was out, and I don't think Jamari played. What was their status tonight? Yeah, Jamari just is still sore from last week. So we, we got him ready to play. He was warmed up. And, uh, you know, we were going to start Cam, so he was kind of questionable. And then kind of got out there and just didn't have the same pop. I just was worried that if I played him, he, he might get hurt. And so uh, we feel good about James and Keona. Um, he just didn't have the, the burst that we thought he would. He was trending. He practiced, on, you know, practiced uh, a little bit on Tuesday, practiced a little bit. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. So I thought he'd be able to go. And if he needed to, he probably would have gone. But um, this was a unique week and that it was a short week as well. You know, we're, we're on, in Big Ten play on Friday. So being able to save him, um, not need him, was – Probably important, and then uh, you know, Mike. I'll probably address that later. It's just coach's decision. He's still with us. I just he just didn't play tonight. How prepared is this team now for Big Ten play, and how nice has it been to have the three home games and, and just to kind of build your team here in, in Lincoln versus on the road? Yeah, I think one of the one of the key things, Sean, is getting getting a lot of guys in the game. You know, even at the end, you know, you have you know you have Maverick Noon, and you have you know uh, Ishmael Smith Flores, you have Amari Sanders, you have all these guys out there playing meaningful minutes. You had your whole second line playing meaningful minutes. And so that, that to me, that's been really good that with two or three games, we've been able to get the twos and some of the threes into the game. Um, you know, you never know, you never know when, when it comes to conference play, you never know where you are till you get there, right? And so, um, you know, some teams blow out some teams, some teams, you know, play other teams closer. It's really even when you look at stats, I don't, I don't, when I look at the Big Ten, I only look at Big Ten versus Big Ten stats. I don't look at even the non-con stats. You know, Big Ten puts out like their Big Ten only stats. Because I have to, see, we have to see kind of how, where we are with each other. So, I'm anxious for Friday night. I'm anxious, you know, that they're a good team. I think, you know, I think they'll probably end up being ranked. Hopefully, we stay ranked. And I don't know the last time ranked two ranked teams played each other. I think they were 26 last week year weekend in the AP poll. I'm a big fan of Coach Bielema. So hopefully they move up and be a, you know, be a cool night on this coming Friday night. Can you talk about just dealing with the short week heading into conference play and just preparation for that? Yeah, well, you know, last last year we were going into this game, we just lost to Michigan, and we put on pads and practiced on Sunday. So maybe a little different tenor this week. But, um, you know, even there, as I was walking out, Marquise Buford was making it very clear to everybody, like, you know, we're coming in here tomorrow ready to work. You know, normally Sunday's our off day. You know, we do a big family dinner with the players' families and our families. You know, we won't be able to do that tomorrow. It'll be a work day for us. And our, our off, off day this week will be next Saturday. So we'll work tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The great thing is we're not traveling. You know, our Friday night, our Friday game is, you know, obviously at the end of the season versus versus Iowa. But uh, we'll, we'll work tonight. I mean, we'll work tomorrow. Um, we Because it was a night game, I had a chance to, you know, watch their game today. We're, we worked some today, worked some yesterday to be prepared for Illinois. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Just, 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 just
big plays have gotten called back over the first couple of games. He finally finds the end zone. What was that moment like just getting the senior score? Yeah, I was fired up for him. You know, I mean, I uh, thought that it was a heck of a call by, you know, Sat. I mean, you know, calling reverse on the 12, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> a little more conservative. But, uh, and I thought, you know, Borgature did a great job, came around and made a big block for him. And uh, great to see Ja'Cory get in. And, you know, when, when he plays, he plays with joy. And it was great, you know, great to see the review kind of go our way. That was a big call, you know, when, when he, you know, they had called him down the field. And then, and then, you know, they ruled that he was behind the line. I appreciate the Big Ten. For, for changing that one. So, um, uh, yeah, Ja'Cory's a weapon. You know, he had that deep over uh, that we um, that we hit early on, so keep, keep trying to find ways to get him the ball. The interception by Dylan um, obviously challenged it. Uh, what what'd you think of that play? I mean, do you, do you want, to, want to make the throw? That oh, that's throw? the right throw. Yeah, that's 100% the right throw. I mean, it's, it's quarters, safety triggers. We try to throw the out route to Thomas. He triggers it, you throw the post. That's one-on-one, -on -one. you know. We're, you know, the thing with Dylan is you're, you're going to play NFL football with him. Like, if, if he's going to throw the ball to a spot and he's expected his guys to go make a play on the ball, and I thought Jalen made the play on the ball, so I'm not in any way throwing Jalen on the bus. Looks like their kid made a play, you know. But um, if we don't put those things on tape, then we'll throw the post first quarter. It's just going to be a long year. You know, we had that conversation, I think Sam had asked it the other day about, you know, Iowa and all this. You have to hit those posts, and uh, their kid made a nice play. Um, I challenged it because I learned last year, you know, we had, we had three or four plays that the next day, hey, the replay was wrong. And so what I learned was you can replay, challenge the replay. So as I w looked at it up on the screen, it looked like Jalen came down with the ball, so I was at least going to challenge it. I didn't need the timeout. It wasn't a wasted timeout. They told me that, hey, they've already cleared it, but I was told last year you can still challenge it, and you should still challenge it if you think it's wrong. So I challenged it and um, didn't win. All right. All right. See you guys Friday.